Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Jennifer Lucy, and I'm here representing CERP at the University of York and a collaboration of universities and research institutions uh, to talk about the Sensor program, uh, which is a, pros a proposal to address the knowledge gaps in sustainability. The Socially and Environmentally Sustainable Oil Palm Research Program, or Sensor, is an integrated multidisciplinary research program designed to fill key knowledge gaps in testing and developing the RSPO's principles and criteria for sustainability. It was developed as a result of a scoping study which was commissioned by the RSPO to look into the knowledge gaps uh, related to testing and developing RSPO's principles and criteria four to seven. That's um, agricultural best practice, social and environmental responsibility, and new plantings. Um, we conducted a comprehensive literature review of, of scientific papers, um, of the grey literature, so looking at NGO reports, sustainability reports from growers and policy reports. And we also obtained expert opinion uh, through online surveys and face-to-face -face contact. Um, and many of you will have contributed to that at the RT9 last year, so thank you very much. Uh, the result of the scoping study was that there were still significant knowledge gaps uh, which required urgent research in order to properly test and develop the RSPO's principles and criteria for sustainability. And so the project was developed. So why is more research necessary? Well, we need to develop the evidence-based approach for testing the principles and criteria um, in order that the RSPO is credible. We need to provide baseline information. That is, um, we need to quantify the conditions without oil palm uh, and look at how oil palm impacts on those conditions um, in order to develop solutions and to ensure uh, that those solutions are effective. Um, now, you will have heard uh, in the previous plenary that uh, of all the wonderful progress that RSPO and its members have made, but uh, this is a continual uh, process of improvement, and so we need to continue to advance the development of sustainable practices. And crucially, this needs to be an independent assessment. All this requires the rigorous and independent scientific research, um, and this is what the Sensor Program provides. So with the program to be funded, the uh, research structure would look a little bit like this. And um, I'm just going to talk you through the diagram. Um, the scoping study showed that there were key knowledge gaps in five key topic areas. These are soil and water, greenhouse gases and air quality, biodiversity, participatory processes and rights, and livelihoods. Each of these topic areas will be headed up by a leading um, academic and they will lead a team of researchers to answer key questions in each of these topic areas. And you also see that there are cross-cutting key themes, and these provide the linkage and the uh, integration of the program. These are the HCV process, agricultural best practice, and cost-benefit analysis. And each of the topic areas will be researching aspects of these key themes and feeding in uh, to, to answering questions on the key themes. Some topic areas also have a special focus, and this is where uh, there were knowledge gaps which were identified which were topic area specific, which really required urgent research to answer. You will also see that in key theme three, this also has a special focus uh, of compliance, and uh, it is important for the ISPO PNCs to actually be sustainable, that they are co properly complied with, um, and it was felt that this compliance is intrinsically linked to the costs and benefits or perceived costs and benefits um, of applying sustainable practices. The project will be coordinated by a steering committee of leading scientists and key personnel who will be dedicated to ensuring the coordination of the key themes and the synthesis and dissemination to RSPO and stakeholders, which is a critical aim and I'll, I'll talk about more about later. So now I just want to give you a brief flavour of the kinds of research that uh, are proposed should the project be funded uh, in each of the topic areas. And I'll start with soil and water. Uh, well, this will be coordinated by Professor Rory Walsh at Swansea University. And his, his team will be looking at aspects of riparian buffers and how effective they are on preventing sedimentation and chemical runoff into water systems and how this can be improved. 
You'll also be looking at uh, the sources of these problems, so uh, management practices for erosion prevention and fertiliser regimes, and the costs and benefits of these practices uh, for smallholders as well as large enterprises. Greenhouse gases and air quality will be coordinated by Professor Nick Hewitt at Lancaster University. His team will be looking at uh, carbon storage capacity and HCVs. He'll be looking at the same management practices as uh, soil and water group, but this time looking at their impacts on nitrogen and methane emissions. And he'll also be looking at a, a little understood um, issue, which is uh, quantifying the ozone production of plantations and, and modelling this with uh, implications for crop yields and human health and the environment. Topic area three, biodiversity, will be coordinated by Dr. Keith Hamer at the University of Leeds. He'll be looking at quantifying and improving biodiversity levels in the HCV-designed oil palm landscape. He'll also be looking at uh, the same management practices, but this time uh, interested in how these could uh, impact on biodiversity actually in the plantation itself, either for important ecosystem services or for connectivity between HCVs. And he'll be looking at the costs and benefits of implementing these biodiversity-friendly practices uh, and of monitoring. Now we move on to the social topic areas. Uh, participatory processes and rights, coordinated by Dr. Mikhail Kona at Wageningen University. He'll be investigating the EPIC process and the HCV process uh, to see whether they're effective uh, in delivering benefits communities and where the problems are and how we can improve them. He'll be looking at approaches and incentives for community involvement in plantations uh, and improvement of mechanisms for labour organisation. And the final topic area, livelihoods, will be coordinated by Dr. Maya Slingland and Yolanda Vandenberg, also at Bargainingen. Uh, they will be looking at natural resource use uh, and ecosystem service needs of uh, smallholders and local communities, and whether the HCV process currently provides for sufficiently for these. They'll also be looking at how sustainable agricultural practices can be um, adopted by smallholders where the problems are and the use of social organisation in this. And their special focus will be uh, looking into ILO, International Labour Organisation standards for employers as well as employees and for profits. Now I'll just bring you back to the diagram which I showed you before to talk a little bit more about these key themes which provide the integration which is a critical objective of the sensor. And the reason for this is that all these uh, different aspects are closely linked to each other. So if you try to change something uh, in one area, such as soil and water, this can have knock-on effects in different areas, uh, such as aquatic biodiversity or downstream communities. And so these key themes provide us uh, with the ability to uh, synthesize the information from uh, a range of topic areas uh, and, and uh, deliver outputs uh, based on uh, the synthesis of a whole number of different disciplines. Uh, so for example, in the HCV process, we can look at how well the HCV process uh, conserves biodiversity, but also how much uh, carbon storage capacity there is, and which management practices are good at uh, promoting both of these aspects. And whether we have conflicts of interest uh, between local communities and conservation efforts, uh, and how this can be improved. In the agricultural best practice section, um, we can look at management practices uh, and how they affect a number of different things. So if you want to, uh, for example, take an example of looking at uh, vegetation cover and how well it uh, could uh, reduce erosion, but also whether it has a, an impact on biodiversity or your greenhouse gas emissions. And also whether these management practices are feasible um, for smallholders to adopt. And finally, this final key theme, cost-benefit analysis, is key to um, really addressing a critical aim of the sensor program, which is that we deliver results and recommendations that are realistic and achievable to, for growers to implement. So looking at the costs and benefits for communities, for the environment, and in terms of, of yields, staffing costs, and implementing all these uh, practices. So if the programme was to be funded, this is how it would run. Uh, it would be coordinated by the Royal Society's Southeast Asia Rainforest Research Programme, or SERP, 
Uh, this program has been running now in Sabah for 26 years and it runs a, a number of large research uh, programs and initiatives. Um, and it really has the infrastructure, expertise and facilities available um, to, to cope with a, a program of this scope. It will be a five-year program and we'd have main sites in Malaysia and Indonesia looking at peat and mineral soils uh, and at small holdings and large enterprises. It's really important that we do not duplicate existing research and that we really target those uh, key knowledge gaps we identified in the scoping study. And so we will capitalize on our strong links with ongoing research programs, not only to uh, gain maximum added value for knowledge exchange, but also to really make sure that we target our research questions uh, in those knowledge gaps. So how will the findings from the sensor program benefit stakeholders? Well, our findings will underpin confidence in the RSP approach to sustainability and provide that credible scientific evidence base. Confidence in RSPO PNCs by markets and the public will encourage demand for RSPO certified palm oil, thereby enhancing profits. The findings will highlight which practices are working well and deliver alternative recommendations where appropriate. This will help growers to target resources effectively and have confidence that uh, compliance with these PNCs will really deliver on the sustainability they promise and deliver long-term benefits. Palm oil users and investors can be confident that their commitment to RSPO certified palm oil is fulfilling their obligations to sourcing and investing in sustainable products. And finally, the findings from Sensor will enable RSPO and its members to really develop the best methods for ensuring a sustainable palm oil industry, helping to safeguard natural environments, local communities, and wider society. So we will do this um, by making sure that we really facilitate uh, effective dissemination of our findings so that the research outputs can be translated into policy and practice by RSPO, by NGOs, by stakeholders and governments. We will involve funders, stakeholders and RSPO at all stages of the programme delivery so that we can work together to ensure that the programme's findings are delivered to the most appropriate people and in the most usable way. And finally, we will follow a clear exit strategy to ensure a, a lasting legacy of established processes uh, and collaboration with local institutions. Legacy will involve embedding long-term monitoring and standardised information uh, beyond the time frame of the sensor programme. We will also build scientific capacity in local uh, oil perm growing countries and equip key personnel with the knowledge needed to train others into the future. So in conclusion, Sensor will develop, uh, deliver major evidence-based gains in sustainability and provide a robust, credible foundation for the continued development of RSBO PNCs. The economic importance uh, and the potential environmental and social impacts of the palm oil industry necessitate this rigorous assessment of the RSPO guidelines, and this is Sensor's mission. And we're now seeking funding to implement the full programme. Thank you very much for listening.